Charlotte Hong, a deputy governor of the Bank of England, has resigned just minutes after the Treasury Select Committee declared that her professional competence fell short of the standards required. Ms Hogg, a potential successor to Mark Carney, had failed to disclose that her brother worked in a senior role at Barclays when she joined the Bank of England in 2013. As her economics editor Ed Conway reports, it only came to light over the past fortnight following her application for the deputy governorship. She was the rising star of the Bank of England, tipped by some to be the first female governor since it was founded three centuries ago. But today, Charlotte Hogg's career at the top of British finance came to an embarrassing end. Forced to resign after only a fortnight as deputy governor, the shortest term in Bank of England history. It all came back to this, her appointment hearing at the Treasury Select Committee. I didn't know what my brother did until I... I mean, I knew he worked for Barclays, but I didn't know what he did until I asked him so I could fill in the questionnaire. So that gives you a sense of how little we discuss it. But I am in compliance with all of our codes of conduct because I, I know that I helped to write them. What later transpired is that in stark contravention of those rules, up until then she hadn't declared that her brother worked for Barclays, crucially one of the institutions regulated by the Bank of England. In a letter to the governor, she said, It was an honest mistake. I have made no secret of my brother's job. I fully accept it was a mistake, made worse by the fact that my involvement in drafting the policy made it incumbent on me to get all my own declarations absolutely right. But for the Treasury Select Committee, which issued a damning report into the episode, her decision was welcome. The committee didn't call for her to resign from the bank. We were only expressing a view on whether she should be promoted from her current role to one of the most senior jobs in the Bank of England and we concluded that she didn't meet in all respects the very high standards required for that job. The former Chancellor who, for what it's worth, used to work for her father tweeted, Charlotte Hogg is a real loss to public life. Would she have gone if she had been an older man whose sister worked at a bank? I wonder. Now, of all the storms the bank has had to weather over the course of the past year or so, this one wasn't even on their radar. And to judge from the response from the governor, clearly they did not want Charlotte Hogg to resign. And it rather underlines the fact they're having real difficulty finding talent for those top spots, especially women. I think the bank does have a responsibility to lead the way in terms of having more women in senior positions in the financial services sector. And I also think it will help with the problem of better ethics because the research shows that when you have better gender balance, you have better ethics. According to government sources, it may take three to six months to replace Ms Hogg, leaving the Bank of England under strain and under power for some time to come. Ed Conway, Sky News. Well, the Labour MP John Mann is a member of the Treasury Select Committee and was calling for Charlotte Hogg to step down. He's in our Westminster studio. So, John Mann, you tweeted this afternoon, Charlotte Hogg, strongest opinion ever made by a Treasury Committee. Knowing what we know now, we would not have approved her. Unanimous. Why did you uh, come out so strongly against her? Well, it sounds a fairly small matter of whether you declare something or not. But she's the person who is responsible for writing the Code of Ethics for the Bank of England. And not just as a senior uh, public servant, but also because the Bank of England is the body that oversees all the financial institutions in the country. And if, if she gets a get-out-of-jail card by not filling in the declarations, then everyone else can plead that in mitigation when they do it. And sometimes this can be uh, hugely pernicious, this failure to declare. It's there for a reason. And, of course, in the Bank of England's case... It was explicit what you had to declare and how. There was no ambiguity about it. Therefore, she really had no choice. But as you say, I mean, it was, a, it was an honest mistake. She apologised. She admitted it straight away. As soon as she realised she'd made a mistake, I mean, that's not a hanging offence, is it? I didn't quite admit it straight away. Uh, there was a whole to-do with the Treasury Committee. The Treasury Committee, first of all, endorsed her promotion. So only when things came to light afterwards, when she had to clarify what she'd said... She misled the Treasury Committee. Her answers were inaccurate. They weren't true. And whether that's an honest... I, I give her the benefit of the doubt. I'd say I'm sure that's uh, not deliberately misleading the committee. But if you're that incompetent in terms of the code of conduct that you wrote and misleading Parliament about whether you filled it in or not, then are you competent enough to be in this job overseeing everyone else who's expected to be equally competent in declaring things in every single bank and financial institution across the country. You're saying you've never filled in a form inaccurately by mistake yourself? I mean, everyone's human. 
Uh, everyone is human, but for three years not doing so. Uh, if you write the code and the code applies to tens of thousands of people in financial services, in banking across the country, and it's explicit and it says, do you have brother stroke sister who works in a financial institution and you don't fill that in and then go for promotion, you can't be surprised if people say, hang on a minute, you're responsible for the code of ethics, you've not filled it in, therefore you shouldn't be promoted. What did you make of George Osborne's tweet? He, he said uh, he wondered whether she would have gone had she been an older man whose sister worked in a bank. Well, have to you be been honest, a sexist? No, I think, I think it's pathetic from Osborne. Uh, you know, uh, gender's got nothing to do with it. It's a question of competence and it's a question of what she did. If she had been a man and an older man, exactly the same standards would have applied, should have applied. And the Treasury Committee doesn't, uh, the Treasury Committee doesn't differentiate on that basis. Uh, and neither should she be given the benefit of the doubt. You know, you she worry? wrote the code. She wrote it. And the uh, code you... said, here's what you declare. She didn't declare it. And it wasn't just in the forms. She didn't declare it in the various meetings where there could well have been some conflict of interest. That's okay. not appropriate. You know, there are bigger questions for the bank for why she wasn't challenged and pulled up by someone on this before. OK, so, I mean... Uh, it's, it's clear from reading her resignation letter that Mark Carney initially tried to dissuade her from resigning. Do you feel that Mark Carney's position has been called into question here? Do you feel he's been undermined by what's happened here? His position's not called into question, but he's certainly got some difficult questions to answer about the culture within the Bank of England and about its systems. You know, how many more senior officials have failed to declare direct family links into the financial sector that they oversee? We need, to be, we need to be confident that there's nobody. The code of ethics, standards in public life, don't come from nowhere. They come in order to ensure we have the highest standards in this country, and that must apply to banking the Bank of England. Okay, Mr Carney must ensure that that is, that is applied.